Welcome to Best Life 30, your 30 day journey to creating the best life possible for yourself. You can watch just this video or if you want to sign up for the whole series for free and get the bonus companion worksheets that go along with this video, check out the link in the description below. All right, so today is bonus day number four and we're going to learn how to optimize our exercise. Once I wake up, I use waking up as the very trigger that reminds me to work out. I'm not one, I work out every day, but I'm not one of those guys that really loves working out, but working out is so powerful. In fact, it's one of the most powerful things that you can do for yourself. I'll put it second only to reading. Uh, so I get up, first thing, as soon as I roll out of bed, I go straight to the gym and I start working out. Now the reason working out is so powerful, there's tons of research. Uh, you can start with the book Spark by John Rady, who's actually been on the show. Incredibly powerful book that draws parallels between exercise and cognitive performance and how it can have massive impacts um, and, and just some really, really powerful stories in that book. So can't encourage uh, enough for you to read that. Another IQ guest, Norman Doidge, has talked a lot about the brain and how it heals itself. In fact, in his book called The Way the Brain Heals, um, talking about how walking uh, specifically and exercise in general can have a tremendous impact on the brain's ability to rewire itself. So not only is there just neurological science behind why getting exercise is so powerful, but beyond that, moving into some softer science, I will tell you that developing discipline is one of the most critical things that you need to be successful. Being successful comes with a litany of things that you're not going to want to do, but you're gonna to have to do them anyway. You're gonna to have to push yourself when you don't want to, you're gonna to have to get out of bed when you'd rather lay in bed, you're gonna to have to work on that Saturday when your friends are out partying and you'd rather be partying, but there's that awesome quote, don't sell out what you want most for what you want right now. And discipline is gonna be the thing that allows you to do that, but you need an area in which you can train that discipline. Nothing comes without training, not discipline, uh, nothing, not even a great relationship, even a great relationship, a relationship based on love and chemistry and all these amazing things, I still think needs training to get great. And having to show up every day at the gym develops that discipline. Having to lift long past the point of fatigue, having to push yourself long past the point of pain, having to get disciplined about your diet to make sure that you see results from the exercise, all of it is feeding into strengthening your discipline and having those little wins of whoa I couldn't curl this way yesterday but I can curl it today that kind of thing really helps to build your confidence and as I'm sure you guys have heard before and I'm sure as you feel in your gut when you've got confidence you hold yourself differently you think about yourself differently you act differently and that confidence is born of those little wins and if you can put yourself in situations where you can have these small incremental victories every day and you're pushing yourself and you're seeing the results not only of getting a victory but you're seeing the physical changes that your body goes through it's going to reconceptualize your internal narrative and that internal narrative is everything and simply going to the gym every day you get to change the story you tell you if you have anxiety if you have post-traumatic stress disorder if you have any kind of mental health condition it's nothing to be ashamed of and it's nothing to hide and it's something to hit head on with um, there's one thing one thing that if you did every single day, no joke, it would make an extraordinary difference in whatever mental health issue you're struggling with, and that is exercise. And the reason why I say this is not based on my own personal experience, it's based on the fact that the, um, I think it's the American Psychiatric Association, this is coming from Dr. John Rady, a, a friend of mine who has written a ton of books uh, about not only ADHD, but also the benefits of exercise and what it has on your brain. But he's also a professor at Harvard and a practicing um, clinician. And this is his area of expertise. And one of the things that they now mandate as a diagnosis for anybody with depression or anxiety, or any mental illness, frankly, is you've got to exercise every day. And the reason you've got to exercise every day is because what we know about human beings is that when you physically move, your physiology changes, and that changes your brain. Getting your heart rate up, getting outside, breathing, feeling connected, getting out of your house, which may make you feel depressed and trapped. Doing that every day, that physical push. You don't have to run. You don't have to go to an aerobics class. Get outside with your dog in the woods. Walk with a good friend for two or three miles. Doing that every single day 
not only moves your body, which changes your mind, it gets you out of your physical environment, which is one of the things that people with depression tend to have a hard time doing. And it also creates a bit of momentum and a bit of a routine in your life. You take on just that single thing. Get outside and exercise every single day as if your life depends upon it, because you know what? It does. Your brain needs it, your body needs it, your mental health needs it. I used to be able to, to, to eat whatever I want, and then in six weeks I could get in any shape I wanted to get into, but that's not the case anymore. We're, we're around the 12 or 14 week uh, uh, mandatory uh, training to, to do anything, but, but I love it. I'm, I enjoy, um, I enjoy the discipline of it. For me, working on, on your body is the beginning of everything. You know, your mind starts to work better, you're uh, the better husband, a better father, a better friend, and life is just better when you, you know, care for your body at the highest level. My whole focus is how do you get the greatest result with the least amount of time or energy. Intensity trumps duration all day long. We're gonna do a, the briefest workout that'll max you out. <laughs> all right, Rich, let's do it. Next thing I'm gonna do is have my trainer here. His name is Billy. We're gonna do this one first. Let's pop you over here. It's designed to make every muscle in your body get the maximum demand in the shortest time with the least trauma. We're gonna do basically a chest press on here. Your job yep. is you're gonna push as hard as you can continuously, and a timer will go on, you're gonna to to hold and keep pushing as hard as you can until the timer's done, it goes for five seconds. Go for it, full tilt. That's it, go, 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 good, 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 harder, harder, harder. Come on, baby, come on, 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 come on. Okay, let go, good. Now we're going to leg press. Full tilt, as hard as you can. Go, 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 go. Look at this monster. Look at this go, let it go, oh, there you go. Nice job, you're done. Okay, this is gonna be core pull. Go, 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 go. Done, that one not quite as good. You know, you've done what, 15 seconds of exercise so far total, right? Yeah, it felt like I did like an hour's workout. If you want, we'll put you on the little torture machine. This, this is something we only do once or twice a week. You don't do this every day. It is gonna put you aerobically and anaerobically. There will be a point when it's pure anaerobic and so that's where you're gonna need your will, okay. right, to be able to do it. Okay. And so we're filming you so you can't stop. <laughs> okay, pop on here. <laughs> go, full tilt now, start it up, go. It. Full tilt, all the way. And push, Push as go. hard as you can, that's it. Go. Come on, baby! Come on, push, come push, on, push, 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 push! Oh, you're going! Push, 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 push! You got it, you got it, you got it, got it. Don't, don't let it Get go. It rich. Keep going, man, don't pull it in. Got one minute down, three minutes to go. You should feel like you're about to die, but you're not. Last minute, everything oh you got God, for a minute. minute. You can do anything for a minute. This is where you get all the growth. Get it back above 60, you can do it. You're a beast. Come on, beast. Everything you got, this is it. 12 seconds. Line up, 10 seconds. Nine. Seconds. Harder. Go, 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 go. Good job, good effort. Come on, again, again. Finish strong. Give him some water. Well done, well done. He's tired. Well done. <laughs> My forearms feel like uh, jello. You're going to feel it for the next couple of days, brother. All we're going to do now is cleanse your body a little bit more. We're going to put you in the heat and then put you in the cold and you're done. So, what you're going to do is you're going to pop in here for as long as you can take it, push yourself to the edge, which for most people is about four to five minutes. And then when you're done, without delay, once you're there, you're gonna drop right down into the cold plunge here. All ready? Come on in. <laughs> Say goodbye to him one last time. Good knowing you, Rich. <laughs> Put some water on there. <laughs> How are you feeling, by the way? It's pretty extreme. Yes, it yeah. was. Well, that's I, what I do all the yeah. time, so you get a better feel. On the four-minute machine, yeah. two minutes in, I, I didn't think I was actually going to be able to do it. Yeah. The voice in my head kept saying, "Just, just give up. It's fine. Just yeah. give up. It's fine." Yeah. But. Thank God I we had a camera and two people camera, screaming yeah, at you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, that, I didn't want to be humiliated on camera, yeah. I wouldn't have humiliated you, but Billy would have. I can yeah. promise you yeah. that. There's a lot of people that are eating sh food, and then by the end of the day, your body's in a crisis. Yep, yep. Your body's just processing all this bullshit.
Yeah, and people ask me that too. They go, you know, how much do you sleep? First of all, I get asked all the time. So I go to bed around 11. I woke up, wake up around 4.30 every day. So that's five and a half hours. I, I, sometimes I sleep more than that. Sometimes I go to bed at 10, 10.30, 11. Sometimes I stay up later. But when the f- person says to me, oh, you know, I, I can't do that. I feel horrible. How can I feel better? And, and my first question is like, well, what are you eating? What are you eating? Because if you're eating Cheetos and chocolate chip cookies for lunch, there's no way you're going to feel good. And I don't care if you slept 12 hours the night before. Yeah, that's a, it's a giant factor. And if you're eating a big, like, bullshit lunch filled with nonsense, like, your body's got to process all that stuff. And so at the end of the day, yeah, you're going to lose your willpower. So, like, when 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock rolls around, you're going to be tired. But if you have a healthy lunch and, you know, you're, you're properly fueled and then you also have positive people in your life, everyone's motivated, by the end of the day, you're going to feel good. Like, say, if you're, go- if you're doing jujitsu with a bunch of other people that are doing jujitsu, everybody's enjoying it, you're looking forward to that 6.30 class, everybody's fired up, you get out of work, you're pumped man mm-hmm. you, you what you're doing when you get out of work you're fueling up with water you're trying to get some electrolytes in you because you know you're going to get out there on the mats and you're going to sweat it out yeah and the thing you got to do too is when you get done with work and it was a grind and you didn't get you ate crappy food and whatever happened happened and you got yelled at by your boss or whatever and the real easy decision is to be like i'm not going to go train tonight those are the nights you got to train because that is going to kick you back onto track real quick when you get yeah. in there and you see your boys and they're, they're getting ready to f- tear you up on the mats and that's going to get you on track as opposed to going home and watching tv which isn't going to do anything for you yeah and if it's if jiu-jitsu is not your thing whatever the f- your thing is just go and do it just force yourself to do it and if you feel like sh- because you ate lunch then your lunch was you know filled with bullshit well then hey dummy don't eat sh- lunch tomorrow tomorrow try a nice salad yeah. you know try a salad with some salmon and see how you feel then you're like hey i feel way better today at six o'clock duh yeah, yeah. now yeah. your decision making will be better like th- people don't understand how significant it is like all these little decisions they those are like the that's the path for the rest of your existence on earth and if you decide to go to f- cheetos chocolate chip cookie route <laughs> you're, you're you're just making a sh- path you're carving your f- path through broken rocks and glass and it's not the way to go Yeah, there's no doubt that the the life change decision isn't one big decision that you make it's no. all these little tiny decisions it's you know having a salad instead of cheetos that's 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 what it is on a daily basis and if you think about that and then you just make the right decision on those little things that's where that's where the change happens yeah, when I take a spin class, a really good spin class where I'm loving the music and I can absolutely let go and charge into my body, I can like feel into every single movement. I can let the sweat pour off of me. I can get lost in the, in the rhythm. I find that it opens up a channel in me like nothing else. Sometimes it could be taking a great walk. I think- I, I wanna push you a little bit on yeah. opens the channel so I really understand it. Yes. Is it where you feel like you can hear the little voice in your mind? Is it where you're... Ironically, you can't try and force it to show up. So oftentimes when I hit a roadblock in my business and I'm just at this stalemate, I'm like, oh, I can go this way or this way. I'm stuck. Let me go work out. Let me go take a walk. Let me take a spin class. Let me take a dance class and get immersed in that so that my subconscious and the rest of my body has a chance to work through it. And it will produce an answer or an insight when I'm not looking for it. It could happen at the end of the class, when I'm done in the shower, sometimes it happens on the bike, it doesn't matter. But what you just have to do is have a level of faith and trust and you can't go in forcing it. I feel like what happens through exercise, and again, it's when you have that level of faith to surrender to your body, to surrender that you have wisdom within you that you're not gonna access grinding to it, it, unfurls almost like a flower blooms when it's ready. If you see self-improvements, not even just with cars, with your own body, you know, when mm-hmm. you go work out, do you feel better when you come out of the gym all pumped up? Yeah. Or do you feel better when you haven't worked out for a month? Yeah. Of course, you know, you, when you go to the gym, yep. you know, you're building your, you know, something happens when you see changes in your body, with your assets, when you see even gaining a good friend. I have my down days, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you do too. We're all course. human, you know. Yep. You could have all the money in the world. You're still going to have a bad day. You know? yeah, absolutely. You don't know what's going to cause it, but, you know, you do. And, you know, for me, working out is great. I have a personal trainer three times a week. And then when I don't have my personal trainer, I just get out of bed and drop on the floor and do 20 push-ups, 30 push-ups. Do. I do it until I can't do it anymore. Mm. And then I hit the shower and I feel great, you know. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's just keeping the fluids going, you know, yeah. your mind fresh. Yeah. Because workout not just improves your physics, mm-hmm. it also helps your mind. 
You Agreed. Know? And uh, sometimes it helps your mentality more than your physique, but people don't realize it, you know. Mm. It helps you focus. When you come to work and you haven't exercised, you're lethargic. Sometimes it takes an hour or two before you even get into the flow of doing things, right? When you exercise prior to coming to work, your mind is sharper right off the bat. And you just kinda wanna get into it. You're in the flow of things. You're going, you're moving, you're coming up with better ideas, better ways of you know, having this thing advance to the next level. What if we do this? What if we do that? What if we do this? Everything does better because your mind is sharper. If you don't have energy, you can't solve problems. Why? Because, so think Think about it this way, if you're in a room, in a boardroom, everybody's going back and forth trying to solve problems, and you see everybody do this one signal. Let me tell you what the signal is. This is the signal, you ready? This is the signal of somebody saying, we should just figure something out and leave the boardroom. This is how it looks like. You know what the signal is? What is the signal? I wanna go home, right? The signal is, I wanna finish this meeting here. We should already wrap up. You could have been seven minutes away from solving this problem in a way so effective that would have helped you take your business to the next level, but you were so tired because you're lethargic from not exercising, not having proper diet, that you just made the good decision instead of the best decision, so you don't advance to the next level. And by the way, this happens in sports, this happens in business, this happens in everything you watch because you can tell when decisions are made and this is what happens. The person goes like this. Ah, let's just do it. That's not the best decision. That's just a decision. It's not the best decision. The best decision is, um, if we do this, it does this. If we do this, it does this. If we do this, it does this. Here, let's write this on ta 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 You know what, I think this is the best decision. We're moving with this. What do you guys think, great? Let's talk about running. All right, first, big picture. This is what matters, and the body is just there to like, keep this thing running, the brain. Big picture. This is the West Side Highway. This is where I run almost every day. Uh, it's lovely here. River on that side, city on that side. This is the one mile check-in and I feel great. I have not always been a runner. I ran cross country in middle school when I was like 11. I didn't really start running until I was 26, 27, 28, 28. What year is it? All right, still on the west side highway. Um, now I'm in Midtown, so I'm halfway up the island from where I was before. This is mile number six, and I feel great. I didn't start running until I was 28, because when I was 26, I was told I'd never be able to run again. Here's what happened. I'm gonna do this. Okay, so I borrowed Candace's scooter, and I was driving down the street, and this dude ran a red light, and straight up just cremated the scooter and my leg. I was in the hospital for about a week. I was in surgery for like 12 hours. This is my busted up leg as soon as I got to the hospital. They had to drill through my leg with a drill to quickly put pressure on it, put it in traction to slow the bleeding. So when I was in the hospital, right before they were gonna release me, I asked the doctor, how long till I'm 100%? How long till I run? And I'll never forget, he said to me, you'll be able to chase after your kids and you'll be able to chase after a taxi cab down the street, but you'll never be able to run again. I cannot tell you how much that freaked me out. I was 26 years old and being told that I would never run again, it was devastating, absolutely devastating. the west side highway on the other end of this tunnel. Now I'm uptown. I'm coming into the island here. This is the eight mile check-in and I feel great. Okay, I found the footage. All right, so this is two years after I got to the hospital. This was, well, here. Just finished my first marathon, check out my feet. Those are my feet. This is gross. 
You get the point. So my first marathon was a, an unmitigated disaster. I really like got beat up. I sat down. I was walking. My time was abhorrent. I hate doing something and not being great at it. Okay, this is the Upper West Side. That's Central Park. I just ran across the Upper West Side. I'm now entering Central Park. Mile nine check-in, I feel great. Four months later, I ran my second marathon and I really got, I really got it together. Okay, this is the southernmost point in Central Park. That's 59th Street. This is check-in number like 10 and change, and I feel great. Somewhere I decided that running wasn't enough, and I started to really get into triathlons. Here's my favorite picture of myself running a triathlon. Just look at that intensity. Easternmost side of Central Park. That's Fifth Avenue there. Mile 12, and I feel great. Since being told by that doctor that I'd never be able to run again, I've run 22 marathons. I've competed in four Ironman triathlons, probably 100 other triathlons and other road races, uh, and I never looked back. And we talked about it last season, season one of the greatest vlog in the history of the world, about how I work out so hard in the mornings. Two reasons. One, so the hardest part of my day is now over. It's 7.30 a.m. And everything I have to do from now on will not be a 13 speed sprint on a 12 incline followed by a decline bench. I don't have to do that again all day today, which is great. And it's really important to start every day making a mind body connection. And I know that sounds like bullshit. I know that sounds super cliche. And it actually makes me throw up a little bit to say it, but it's super true. I'm more connected right now in my pure exhaustion than I will be at all during the rest of the day. For sure, had I not worked out. And now I'm going to think faster, think quicker, be more decisive and be more radical during my entire day to be more productive and be more successful. I always try to outwork people, right? That's just how I made my mark. So the game was at seven. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna come to the Staples Center because we're playing, this is when the Lakers had Kobe and Shaq. Right. Okay, this is, this is like the championship Lakers. So, you know, I'm going to get there at 3 o'clock and I want to make sure I make 400 made shots before I go back into the room and then I sit in the sauna and I get ready for the game. Who do I see? I see Kobe Bryant, already working out. So once I set my foot across that line, I started working out. And so I worked out for a good hour, hour and a half. And when I came off, after I was done, I sat down and of course I still heard the ball bouncing. I look down, I'm like, this guy's, this guy's still working out? So he was working out, like, it looks like he was in a dead sweat when I got here, and he's still going. And it's not like his moves are nonchalant or <laughs> lazy. He's doing, like, game moves, you know? Um, I sit there and I unlace my shoes, I'm like, I wanna see how long this goes. So I sit out there and watch, another 25 minutes. And he got done. I said, okay, I think I've seen enough. Go play, you know, come back, get in the sauna, get ready for the game. That game, he drops 40 on us, okay? And after the game is over, I'm like, I, I have to ask this guy. Like, I, I have to understand, like, why, why he, he works like that. Right. So after the game is, I'm like, Hey, Cove, like, why, why were you in the gym for so long? He's like, Cause I saw you come in, <laughs> and, I, and I wanted you to know that it doesn't matter how hard you work, that I'm willing to work harder than you. Wow. You just, you inspire me to be better. Right. And it was the first time I started to see this level of competitiveness where I said. I need to start doing more. Right. Wow. But you, you never get better if you're not willing to put in the time. And basketball is very similar to the game of life. There's going to be ups and downs. It's not always going to be easy. Mm -hmm. There are going to be challenges. There's still going to be curveballs thrown at me. But if you put in the work and you constantly put in the work, that's the only way you're going to grow. We went out to practice at 4 a.m. And that was your idea to do it. But, and I mean, then, you know, all these Nike people are like, no, 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 no. Let's, not, let's not do that. And then you're like, let's do it at 4 a.m. So you got security, you got brand marketing, sports marketing, going, no, 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 let's not do it. You're like, let's do it. Because that's your sustenance, right? I mean, it, it, to me, it just makes complete sense. Not to us. 
But I don't like. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> see, we all right. What you usually? I'm sleeping at 4 a.m. You're, yeah. you're working out, so well, talk about that. Okay, so if 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 your job is to try to be the best basketball player you can be, mm -hmm. right? To do that, you have to practice. You have to train, right? You want to train as much as you can, as often as you can. So if you get up at 10 in the morning, train at 11, right? 12, say 12. Train at 12. Train for two hours, 12 to two. Um, you have to let your body recover. So you eat, recover, whatever. You get back out, you train, start training again at six. Train from six to eight, right? And now you go home, you shower, you eat dinner, you go to bed, you wake up, you do it again, right? Those are two sessions, right? Now imagine you wake up at three, you train at four. You go four to six, come home, breakfast, relax, so, so, blah, blah, blah. Now you're back at it again, nine to 11, right? You relax and now all of a sudden you're back at it again, two to four, and now you're back at it again, you know? seven to nine, look how much more training I have done by simply starting at four, right? And so now you do that, and as the years go on, the separation that you have with your competitors and your peers just grows larger and larger and larger and larger and larger, and by year five or six, it doesn't matter how, what kind of work they do in the summer, they're never gonna catch up, because they're five years behind, <laughs> right? So it makes sense to get up and start your day early because you can get more work in. Is that genetic, or is that something you, you ingrained and trained yourself? No, it was Who just taught you that. For me, it was just it was just common sense. Like, I can I can if I start earlier, I can train more hours, and I know the other guys aren't doing it because I know what their training schedule is, right? So I know if I do this consistently over time, it's, it, the gap's just going to widen and widen and widen and widen and widen, and they won't be able to get that back. Mm -hmm. So it, to me, it was just common sense. I'm like thinking, how can I get an advantage? Oh, start earlier. Yeah, let's do that. How do you develop that, or where do you where do you learn that from? Well, I, I think it's just you know it's just a matter of what's important to you, mm -hmm. and what's important to you for for whatever reason. You know, I, I felt like um, I didn't feel good about myself if I wasn't doing everything I could to be the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. If I felt like I left anything on the table, um, it would eat away at me. I wouldn't be able to look myself in the mirror. Right? So the reason why I can retire now and be completely comfortable about it because I know that I've done everything I could to be the best basketball player I could be. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, that's where it comes from for me. You can't leave any stone unturned. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the best Life 30 questions of the day. It's not enough to just watch a video like this. You have to do something and take action in your life. So pull out your worksheets and answer these questions. And if you don't have the worksheets yet, you can get them for free by signing up for the series in the description below. Here we go. Question number one, how much do you wanna fit exercise into your weekly schedule? Number two, what are the important reasons why this must happen right now? And number three, what will keep you consistent so you follow through? And if you're doing the Best Life 30 challenge with me, give me a hashtag Best Life 30 down in the comments as well so I can celebrate you. Working out, even if it's for 15 minutes, 20 minutes in the morning, something quick, doesn't have to be a two hour marathon workout, it gets your body moving. Just like music gets you moving a little bit, so does working out. And if you're, you're pumping weights, or if you are you know, doing some cardio, whatever it is, moving your body, getting energy, getting activity, getting motion, gives you momentum to go out and do something great. I get a lot of great ideas when I'm working out, I get a lot of great ideas in the shower after I'm working out and after I've finished the workout I feel refreshed energized ready to go out and tackle my day and way more energy than I get if I don't if I miss a workout because I've got a really early morning you know conference call or you know I'm off speaking at some event then I feel sluggish it's harder to get started so get some workout time scheduled in there again like 15 minutes in the morning just to get your body moving if you want to join the Best Life 30 Challenge and get the free worksheets, click the link right here below me. Or if you want more videos on how to optimize your exercise, check out the playlist right there next to me. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.